Hey there, everybody! Welcome to episode number 526 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Folks, we are talking about mid-range FPGAs this week with Gordon Hands from Lattice Semiconductor. Gordon and I are chatting all about Lattice's new Avant FPGA platform, the challenges it's looking to solve, the details of Lattice's Avant eFPGA family, and why low power, form factor, and interface availability are cornerstone to this new Avant FPGA platform. Also this week, I take a closer look at some very unique new robots that can sense, analyze, and act in challenging environments. Oh yeah, and they're foldable and inspired by origami. <laughs> so first, please welcome Gordon Hands from Lattice. Hi, Gordon. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. No, great to join. It's been a long, long time since we last chatted. It sure has been a long time since I've chatted with you, Gordon. So first off, give my audience a refresher on what Lattice Semiconductor is all about. Yeah, sure. So, you know, like uh, a lot of companies at the, at the highest level, of course, we're all about uh, enabling our customer success. But I want to kind of give three areas that we're focused on to enable that. The first is uh, making sure that uh, we're delivering the uh, products that represent low power leadership in each of the product categories, which are of course in the, in the programmable logic space. Next is uh, really all about allowing our customers to accelerate their time to success with the investments that uh, we're making in software. I think the best example of uh, what we're up to there are the uh, five solution stacks that we've released over the last couple of years focused on edge AI, security, machine vision, ORAN, and factory automation. And then lastly, of course, we like to back that up with uh, excellent customer support, both in terms of uh, device availability and also uh, technical support. Excellent. Now, you recently wrote a blog and participated in a panel discussion called Solving Challenges in the Mid-Range FPGA Market. So, Gordon, first, give my audience a brief rundown on what you mean by mid-range FPGAs and what challenges in particular are you looking to solve? Yeah, sure. So we tend to think about the uh, mid-range of the FPGA space from a uh, logic capacity standpoint. So the definition that uh, we use here at Lattice is that the mid-range is those FPGAs between 100,000 and 500,000 uh, logic cells. And uh, as we look across the FPGA market space, uh, we think that that represents about a third of the FPGA applications. And uh, as we kind of go out and chat with customers that are using those kind of products, the messages back that we've been hearing at the highest level is there's really been a, a lack of innovation in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, that lack of innovation is uh, causing a lot of issues for customers. But uh, I think the three highest areas are probably worth highlighting. So the first area is uh, around power. Customers have a lot of thermal challenges. Uh, there's a lot of uh, regulation requiring improve power efficiency. And for many customers are also concerned about battery life. So they're, they're looking for lower power solutions. The next thing that uh, we hear a lot about is form factor. I think this is the, uh, the story for a long time, right? Engineers, every generation, they need to deliver more functionality in a smaller system form factor. And in order to do that, they're looking to companies like Lattice, for smaller programmable logic devices as part of that drive to reduce overall system size. And then uh, lastly, what we're hearing is, you know, because there's been kind of a, a lack of innovation and a lack of uh, recent products, they're not getting access to all of the latest interfaces. So in some cases, this means, hey, I can't choose the memory that I want to use that's going to have good longevity over the life of the product. Or in other cases, it might be, hey, I don't have the interfaces that I need 
to hook up to the uh, latest other components in, in my system, whether that be sensors, SOCs, application processes, and the like. So, Gordon, this leads me to your new Avant FPGA platform. So tell me more about this platform and how it's going to help address those challenges you mentioned. Yeah, sure. So as we start to think about Avant, we're really, you know, from the starting point, driven by customers. In fact, our customers are kind of very used to using uh, leadership products in the small FPGA space said, hey, Lattice, can you really go and take a look? At this mid-range because uh, we need need some of the innovation there. So you know we talked to uh, well over a hundred customer design teams that kind of provided the guidance as to what to do in the product, and uh, we really created a platform that was designed from the ground up to really be optimized for that uh, 100k to 500k capacity range. At a platform level, what that's enabling us to do is deliver way better power than some of the other products uh, out there, up to 2x better, much smaller form factors, up to 5x smaller, also provide all the latest and greatest uh, interfaces like uh, 25 gig SERDES for serial connections, uh, and uh, some of the latest memory standards such as uh, LPDDR4, DDR4, and DDR5 that we're hearing from our customers are the memories they want to design with for the maximum longevity looking forward. And the other kind of exciting thing I think about Avant is it represents the second uh, time that we've taken a, a platform approach. The first time we did that was with our Nexus platform that addresses uh, small FPGAs we announced about three years ago. The platform approach allows us to rapidly develop and launch a, a variety of different families. So. As we announced the platform back in December, we were able to launch uh, the first uh, family of Aunt E. At the time of launch, we noted that uh, we're going to be doing uh, an additional two product launches this year. So there's going to be some uh, other flavors of Avant uh, becoming available to the customers. Now, along with the launch of Avant, you guys also launched the Lattice Avant E family, like you mentioned. So tell me more about these EFPGAs. Yeah, sure. Avant E is very focused on delivering a solution for developers that uh, want to do data processing at the edge. So we kind of said, what's going to be the right mix of parallel I.O., logic, memory, and DSP that's going to enable all that? And uh, we defined a family of three different devices, 500,000 lookup tables, 300,000 lookup tables, and 200,000 lookup tables that that are really pretty unique in the marketplace uh, in terms of having that particular feature set and mix that focused on enabling some data processing at the edge. Because we developed it using the Avant platform, of course, we pick up all of those kind of uh, great platform attributes. So power consumption's uh, very low, and uh, certainly the initial feedback from the customers is they appreciate the advances that we've been able to make there. And they also appreciate the form factor. And if they kind of dive in a little bit on the specifics of the packages, for the 200K, uh, we're able to deliver that amount of logic in an 11 by 9 millimeter package. And then if we look at the other end of the spectrum, the 500K, which is the first device we're sampling, that's going to be supported in a 15 by 13 millimeter package. You know, both of those... uh, really quite a long way ahead of uh, other solutions that are out there in the market space. Fantastic. So, Gordon, what's new and exciting on the horizon for Lattice? Well, I think what you're going to see is uh, continue to uh, invest in the low end of the FPGA space. So that's the uh, Nexus platform. Uh, And in fact, we intend to do two new product family announcements uh, during 2023 on Nexus. So we're going to continue to focus there. We get uh, two more uh, product families coming in the mid-range. And then you're going to see a 10 more investment in these solution stacks. So that's going to take uh, a number of different forms. Uh, One is uh, continuing to iterate and improve the uh, stacks that we already have out in the marketplace. 
The other area is, of course, we're looking for new solution stacks uh, that we can uh, put in place to help customers. So I, I think you can see a pretty consistent uh, drumbeat of new launches and uh, new capabilities coming out from Lattice as we go through 23 and even into 24. Excellent. All right, Gordon, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show in quite a while, you're going to get my new standard off-the-cuff. So, Gordon, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, or the restaurant's closed, what would you have? Oh, my goodness. Hey, well, I think my uh, British heritage is going to show through a little bit here. So, you (laughs) know, I'm imagining... A, a, a nice plate with a, a steak and kidney pie, some uh, big, thick, thick cut fries, some peas, some some nice gravy over it, uh, you know, topped off with some salt and vinegar. Sounds like uh, that, that. That's what I'd. That's what I'd have. I love it. Please, uh, any time that can be delivered to my house, I, I would take it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that's uh, that's definitely my favorite. Not the healthiest, but uh, that's <laughs> definitely uh, comfort food for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, this was super cool, Gordon. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia, really great to touch base again. Hopefully uh, next time won't be quite so long. Yes. So what about those origami inspired robots? Yeah, let's get into it. So at the heart of these new foldable origami inspired robots called origami mechanobots is a brand new fabrication technique that allows these foldable robots to perform a variety of complex tasks without a single semiconductor. So A multidisciplinary team led by researchers at the UCLA Samueli School of Engineering have developed not one, but three different robots to demonstrate the potential of this new robotic system, including a reprogrammable two-wheeled robot that can move along pre-designed paths of different geometric shapes, an insect-like walking robot that reverses direction when either of its antenna senses an obstacle, and a Venus flytrap-like robot that envelops a prey when both of its jaw sensors detect an object. All right, let's talk about this new fabrication technique that's making all of this possible. By embedding flexible and electrically conductive materials into pre-cut thin polyester film sheets, this team of researchers was able to create a system of information processing units, or transistors, which can be integrated with sensors and actuators. Then, they programmed the sheet with simple computer analogical functions. And once cut, folded and assembled, this sheet is transformed into an autonomous robot that can sense, analyze, and act in response to their environments with precision. So, these origami mechanobots actually derive their computing capabilities from a combination of mechanical origami multiplex switches created by the folds and programmed Boolean logic commands like OR, AND, and NOT. And those switches enable a mechanism that selectively output electrical signals based on the variable pressure and heat input into the system. All right, I hear you loud and clear, my fish frying audience. So, how are we powering these bad boys? Well, for this initial demonstration, they were tethered to a power source. But the long-term idea here is to embed an energy storage system into these robots using thin film lithium batteries. So, why is the lack of a semiconductor so important? Well, this team contends that these kind of chip-free robots could be capable of working in extreme environments, like where there is strong radiative or magnetic fields, and in places where there is high electrostatic discharge or intense radio frequency signals. Because we all know that traditional semiconductor-based electronics don't really like those kind of environments. (laughs) 
Study principal investigator Ankur Mehta, an assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering and director of UCLA's Laboratory for Embedded Machines and Ubiquitous Robots, I love that title, says this about the potential of these types of robots in extreme environments. They say, these types of dangerous or unpredictable scenarios, such as during a natural or human-made disaster, could be where origami robots prove to be especially useful. The robots could be designed for specialty functions and manufactured on demand very quickly. Also, while it's a very long way away, there could be environments on other planets where explorer robots that were impervious to those scenarios would be very desirable. Other planets? Now you're talking! This team also points out that these pre-assembled robots could be transported in flat packaging, which could be a huge advantage when it comes to space missions, and could also be used for innovative educational tools or new types of toys and games. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about these origami-inspired robots, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on EE Journal and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well, including the associated research paper called Origami-Based Integration of Robots That Can Sense, Decide, and Respond. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing... I totally dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. <laughs> and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of April 7th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.